Good afternoon and welcome to the first edition of the show for the week, talking about the arena. It is definitely the 28th day of March 2022. And for so many football faithfuls, the 29th of March is definitely destiny date when it comes to the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Will they be at the World Cup, the first ever taking place in the Middle East, talking about the Qatar 2022 World Cup? On the 29th of March 2022, we will definitely find answers to that question. But for now, we'll definitely be taking a preview of the matches that will be coming up. So today's edition of the show will definitely be Afrocentric because we'll be reviewing not just Nigeria's match against Ghana, but other qualifying fixtures that involves African nations as well in terms of our countdown to the various countries that will be representing Africa when it comes to the 2022 World Cup. It's on that note I say welcome to the show once again. I'm Samson Oloide, but because of time, we'll definitely start with the world of all the sports before we delve into the Afrocentric um, aspect of things regards the Africa, uh, the World Cup qualifiers, I beg your pardon. So now let's delve into the thick of things as quickly as we can and we're definitely starting with the world of basketball where the Golden State Warriors, yes, it's all about the Warriors at this time, suffered the fifth loss in their last six games. This time around, it was in the hands of the Washington Wizards as um, they were undermanned. It is the sixth game on a row as well that Steph Curry is missing out on due to the foot injury is suffered against the Boston Celtics. 115 to 123 points that ended with the Wizards winning um, that one. You had um, Cardwell Pope scoring 22 points. You had Chris Pass Pozingis also getting in 23 points. And um, Corey Kispert, that's the rookie, um, scoring a career high 25 points to ensure that the Wizards um, get the better of the Warriors, who, as I said earlier, have lost five of their last six games. You had um, Jordan Poole scoring 26 points to top score for the Warriors. But that wasn't enough. He got assists from Clay Thompson with 25 points and Andrew Wiggins with 23 points. But it was still not enough to um, lead you know, the Warriors to a win as they suffered a loss to the Wizards. And for the Warriors, um, it's definitely not um, a good run of form, especially going into the playoffs. Remember, today is the 28th of March and the playoffs begins on the 16th of April which is just roughly about 18 days away. So um, they need all hands on deck to ensure that they turn the tide around in terms of their poor run of form. And um, hopefully they are able to get Steph Curry back as quickly as they can so that um, they can make um, a, a very good run in the Western Conference playoff. Right about now, it's all about the Phoenix Suns, not just in the Western Conference, but in terms of the best team in the league. They are the first to 60 wins this season. So the Warriors are definitely playing catch up. But it's good that they have Clay Thompson back and Draymond Green is also back. So let's see how the fair when um, Steph Curry is able to get back to you know the team itself. But for the Warriors, it's definitely not a good one at this time. Talking about another team that is struggling at this point in time, it has to be the Los Angeles Lakers. For all of the great work that LeBron James has been doing this season and continues to do, it seems the Lakers, um, in terms of the support cast, are not doing enough to even assist them as the miserable run for the Lakers continues. This time around, they lost to the Pelicans in a crucial game, 116 to 108 points that ended um, as the Pelicans ran out winners, um, having come from behind um, to ensure that the Lakers um, are able to uh, are condemned to another loss for the Lakers. They held a 20-point advantage at some point in the game, but they couldn't make it count. And the more worrisome for the Lakers is not just the loss, but the fact that LeBron James may be out for some time. Um, LeBron James scored 39 points in the match, top scored as usual. Um, also had nine rebounds and five assists in the game, but rode his ankle in the first half of the ma of the game to ensure that um, he's now a doubt for their match against the Dallas Mavericks which is um, on Tuesday taking place in Dallas. And not just that match, but subsequent matches. Um, he played 42 minutes of the game, and we saw him limping afterwards. So it's definitely not a good sight for the Lakers and for LeBron James, who some um, cutters have also uh, made claims as being a potential MVP candidate. But definitely the um, results of, of um, the Lakers will probably work against him in that regard. But in terms of individual performance, his performance is definitely up there. And right now, he is the highest scoring um, player when it comes to the league this season with an average of 30 points per game. Doing that at um, season 19 or year 19, if you want to call that, at the age of 37 is extremely impressive and phenomenal among all other adjectives you want to use to qualify him. But the Los Angeles Lakers 
losing once again. That still turns when it comes to the um, Western Conference standings, and that playing spot is now just hanging by the thread as the San Antonio Spurs are definitely breathing down their neck. Let's see if they'll be able to get it through. But James, despite that nine points, couldn't get them off the hook as um, they lost once again. Now, let's still talk about basketball, but this time around, we're talking about basketball off the court. Um, the good news is that there's a certain lady, which uh, died um, about two months ago. Not many people know her story, but a documentary, a 22-minute film, has ensured that legacy will live on forever. And that's talking about Lucia Harris, the first woman to be drafted into the NBA, or rather WNBA. And um, she is, you know, a, future, um, a, a Hall of Famer, a Naismith Hall of Famer when it comes to the world of basketball. She's the first to score in terms of Olympic women's basketball history. And you can rest assured the records are on and on, having also won three successive titles with the Delta State University um, late in the 1970s. So um, two months after she died, you have um, uh, uh, the documentary about her life, known as Queen of Basketball, winning an Oscar. Yes, the Oscars took place yesterday night, and it was all glitz and glamour. But for sports lovers, this is a big win, especially for basketball enthusiasts, as um, the Queen of Basketball documentary, which is co-produced um, by Shaquille O'Neal, that's the Los Angeles Lakers legend, as well as, 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 well as Golden State Warriors Steph Curry, um, among others, won the documentary for short film. So um, it follows the footpath of um, the late NBA legend Kobe Bryant, who also won an Oscar four years ago for his documentary, Dear Basketball. So it's a good news for um, basketball world and then for Steph Curry as well as Shaquille O'Neal. They can definitely say they've towed the path of their great friend, um, Kobe Bryant, in also winning an Oscar. Um, for Lucia Harris, she's contributed so much to the game and it's definitely good to see that a legacy is carried on even in terms of you know the screen, in terms of the transition, not just from the pages of um, various books, but also um, in terms of a film, 22-minute film that was, and um, you just have to be proud of what she has achieved for, um, you know, the game. The event also saw um, Proud for the director also calling for the release of Brittany Greener um, to come back home. Remember, Brittany Greener is um, the Phoenix Mercury superstar who was arrested in Russia, having found, um, you know, cannabis oil, the um the um, officials, the immigration officials in Russia found cannabis oil in her luggage and um, she has been detained ever since, since February precisely. And if convicted, she will be sentenced to 10 years in prison. So um, while there are diplomatic efforts to get her out of detention, there are also calls from various superstars and um, athletes to ensure that she comes home safely. So Lucia Harris' uh, legacy definitely is still on now let's move away from basketball and delve into the ever busy world of motorsports it's all about the formula one for car racers um you know who are probably fans of the fast and furious that's what um, formula one is about and the saudi arabian grand prix head last night um against all odds it must be said because um you had on saturday uh, a missile attack on an oil depot just three miles away from the racetrack itself and there were question marks regards the safety of the players as well as the stewards and all other um, officials involved. There were also doubts that the race would go ahead. But after four hours of meeting, the drivers decided to race. And um, it was Red Bull's Max Verstappen who edged this one, edging Ferrari's Leclerc by um, a few seconds to just ensure that he gets his first win of the season. And it was an, an, an thrilling um, duel between the two, talking about Verstappen and Leclerc, who engaged in several tussles, uh, but with four laps to go, you had Verstappen, the world champion, overtaking the Ferrari man to ensure that he gets his first win of the season. So um, it's still Charles Leclerc in the lead when it comes to a championship race. Remember, um, both Red Bull drivers, both Max Verstappen as well as um, Sergio Perez, suffered uh, retirement due to engine problems in the first race, which was in Bahrain last week. So um, Charles Leclerc still leads the championship stands and the race continues. While for Mercedes, their struggles continues as well as Louis Hamilton, who started 15th on the grid, could only finish 10th, which is outside the points ranking. So um, the seven-time world champion definitely has a lot to do in terms of catching up with the leading pack of Max Verstappen as well as Charles Leclerc and um, Carlos Sainz Jr., 
who finished third to make it a two podium finish for Ferrari in terms of second and third spots with Sergio Perez finishing fourth just edging George Russell of Mercedes to fifth place. So all in all, um, it was an, an enthralling race at um, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And you have to appreciate the fact that the drivers, despite being shaken by the missile attack from Houthi rebels that struck from Yemen, were still able to keep their composure and give us an entertaining race, one that definitely is for the history books and one we'll remember for so long. We have to continue to push and make use of sports as a tool for peace and not war. And I'm sure that's what the message of the players were in terms of going on with the race, that peace has to reign, and we hope that is what happens all over the world.